Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States, accompanied by Senator and Mrs. Chick Hecht. My fellow Nevadans, well, thank you, Chick, and also Gail, who's with us here today. And I, too, would like to add my thanks and appreciation for the Elko High School Indian Band. And my good friend Paul Laxalt and Congresswoman Barbara Vukanovich. Thank you all very much. It's great to be back in Reno, Nevada. Well, today I've come for a very special reason, because I want to talk to you about a friend of mine a great senator from Nevada, Chick Hecht. Now, like Chick, I've had a career of being underestimated. It started a number of years back. I was under contract to Warner Brothers Studio in Hollywood when it was announced that I was running for governor. And somebody told Jack Warner about that, and Jack thought just a moment, and then he said, no, uh-uh. Jimmy Stewart for governor, Ronald Reagan for best friend. <laughs> but Chick Hecht is a scrapper. The people who bet against him in 1982 should have learned their lesson. If anyone is so foolish as to be betting against him this year, I got a piece of advice. Try your luck in the casinos, the odds are better. <laughs> Uh, 
Reno, of course, is known for its great shows, the lights, the costumes, the headline entertainers. That's sort of like the United States Congress. <laughs> but in the Congress, they have an old and wise saying. There are two types of senators, show horses and workhorses. Chick Hecht is not a show horse, he's a workhorse. He gets the job done for the people of Nevada. Chick doesn't grab headlines, he doesn't showboat. Chick's the kind of senator who doesn't make a lot of noise. He just gets things done for his state. He works hard, he's effective, and he has the respect of his colleagues and the admiration of the President and Vice President of the United States. And both of us sure want to have him in the Senate next year. I think George Bush wants him there even more than I do because George is going to need Chick's help. But I feel a special friendship for Chick. You see, we began working side by side long before he went to Washington. He joined with me in three presidential campaigns spanning campaign spanning two decades to bring our conservative principles to Washington, D.C., that puzzle palace on the Potomac. <laughs> you know, I think it's important for one of us, either me or Chick, to be in Washington next year, and it has to be Chick. You see, we flipped a coin and he lost. <laughs> uh, but through three Congresses, Chick and I have worked together fighting special interests to cut taxes on America's working people. We back strong measures like Graham Rudman to put a collar on congressional spending. We worked for a strategic defense against ballistic missiles, for judges and justices who would respect the Constitution and get tough on criminals, for a strong national defense, and to support brave freedom fighters in our hemisphere and around the world. And if that's what you believe in, too, I think Chick Heck has earned six more years. Don't you? <laughs> On the Nevada ballot this year, there will be two Democratic governors who want to go to Washington, one from this state and the other from a certain state in New England. I'd say they're tax and spend twins. Both are big spenders, and both have raised taxes more than any other governor in their state's histories. I have to tell you what a big mistake it would be for Nevada to send a jet-set tax-and-spend liberal to Washington. <laughs> this would be like sending the fox to guard the chicken coop. You know, up until Sunday, the opposition objected to being called liberal. Not because it was false, but because it was true. But, and now they've come clean and they admit it. They're liberals. Of course, the liberals now are saying that they're on your side. I guess they think that'll make it easier for them to reach their hand around and put it in your pocket. <laughs> but if you care about fiscal responsibility, that means keeping the politician from stealing your wallet. Here's all you need to do on Election Day. Step into the voting booth, put your hand on the lever, and say right out loud, read my lips, no new taxes. <laughs> of course, on Election Day, I don't think that's what the governor of the state plans to do. I think he's going to vote for a liberal governor from New England. Doesn't that tell you something about how he would vote in Washington? And doesn't that tell you something about who you ought to vote for for the Senate? Uh, yes. The bottom line in this election is that Chick Hecht is a strong conservative. And unlike his opponent, he will never have to take orders from the liberal leadership of the other party. And, and that makes a difference, not just on taxes and national security, but also when it comes to confirming judges and fighting crime. 
two issues where the liberal leadership in Congress has gone so far left that today voting against them has become a matter of self-defense. I can tell you that the reason violent crime has fallen sharply since 1981 is because we put criminals on notice. We said, make a false move, and the next sound you hear is the clang of a jail cell door slamming shut. Yes, if you ask Chick or me, there are no citizens more precious than the men and women who guard us, our state and local police. Chick and I believe that when a drug dealer murders a policeman in cold blood, that kind of killer deserves and should receive the death sentence. But the, the liberal leadership opposes capital punishment and tough-minded judges. The liberals oppose voluntary prayer in school, but favor tax hikes, gun control, and a weak-kneed defense policy that only a McGovern could love. <laughs> their, word, their views could only be described by the dreaded L word, liberal, liberal, liberal. <laughs> So let me ask you to do something, and I want to hear your answer. Will you promise me that on November 8, you'll go to the polls, and from top to bottom, and especially for Chick Hecht, you'll give your support to our Republican candidates? And you know, you know, on Election Day, thanks to Chick Hecht, when you go to the polls, you won't have to crawl there you'll be able to drive, as he said, at 65 miles an hour. <laughs> now, from top to bottom, from president to Congress to local office, especially here in Nevada, this is what is at stake. This election year is a referendum on liberalism. But the opposition, even after finally admitting their liberalism, is still trying to deny that they've left the mainstream behind and now belong to the party of McGovern and Mondale. That's the type of liberals they are. No, the fact is today, if you want America to be what FDR, Franklin Delano Roosevelt called a great arsenal of democracy, if like Harry Truman, you want to continue to help those resisting communism, if you believe in lowering tax rates like John F. Kennedy did, and in the traditional values that you grew up with, then you should vote for our Republican ticket because that's what we believe in and the self-proclaimed liberals don't. Yes, the choice before the American people this year is just as clear as it was in past elections when I stood before you. A choice between, on the one hand, liberal policies of tax and spend, economic stagnation, international weakness, accommodation, and always, always blame America first. And on the other hand, what we believe, the policies of limited government, economic growth, individual opportunity, a strong defense, firmness with the Soviets, and always, always, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Back when I took office, America was in the worst economic crisis since the Great Depression. But today, America is in the longest peacetime expansion ever recorded. And as you've been told, we are now 72 months. We've cut taxes, slashed inflation by two-thirds, and sliced interest rates in half. Since the economic recovery began, we've created over 18 million new jobs, good jobs, more than three-quarters of them, the kind that pay $20,000 a year and up. And the unemployment rate in Reno has been cut nearly in half, and statewide real personal income is up by over 30 percent. Today in America, a greater proportion of our potential workforce is employed than ever before in the history of the United States. 
Now, I'm not just looking at the unemployment rate. That is because there are always people between jobs and newcomers coming into the job market. But that potential employment pool, that is considered to be, and hear this, everyone in the United States from 16 years of age and up all the way, including the retirees and so forth, that is considered to be the potential employment pool. Well, today, 62.7% of that group of citizens are employed in jobs in this country. <laughs> Thank you. Of course. <laughs> of course, the self-proclaimed liberals still don't understand how we were able to get rid of their economic crisis, their malaise, their inflation, and their gas lines. So in this campaign, they're treating good times as if they're a given, as if it just happens. Well, their message is you can take prosperity for granted. It's time for a change, so take a chance on us. Well, that's sort of like someone telling you that you've stored up all the cold beer you could want, so now it's time to unplug the refrigerator. <laughs> yeah. but, but whether it's a well-stocked refrigerator or our economic policies, you can't unplug what's working and expect things to stay the same. And with the work and the support of Chick Hecht, a key member of the Senate Intelligence Committee, a man who in fact served his country as an intelligence agent. Our country is once again respected in the world. Our armed forces are strong and America is at peace. And we and our NATO allies stood firm in the face of Soviet missiles pointing at the heart of Europe and Asia. And Mr. Gorbachev got the message. He did business because we meant business and we still mean business. Now, one of the most important ways to show that we still mean business is to re-elect strong conservative Republicans to the Congress, people like Chick Hecht and Barbara Vukanovic, and to elect good Republican challengers like Lucille Lusk down in Las Vegas. I'm asking you on Election Day to send a message that will literally be heard around the world. The fact is, if the liberals had had their way, there would have been no INF treaty or rollback in Afghanistan or democratic triumphs around the globe. They opposed rebuilding our military defenses. They opposed the deployment of the missiles in Europe to counter the Soviet threat. They opposed the liberation of Grenada. They opposed the raid on terrorist Libya. They oppose our policy of helping freedom fighters fight communism and advance the cause of liberty around the world. But Chick has advanced our cause every step of the way. And that's one of the reasons I can tell you today that in the past eight years, we haven't lost one square inch of ground to communism and in fact have returned one small country, Grenada, to freedom. So, ladies and gentlemen, those are the stakes this year, high stakes. But this one is not going to be determined by a spin of the wheel or a cut of the cards. This one is up to you. On November 8th, you can help Nevada and help America hit the jackpot by sending Chick Heck back to the United States Senate. This. This election is about what type of senator Nevada will have and what type of Congress the next president will have. Some people say that it's time for a change. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we are the change. It began when you sent us to Washington eight years ago. And now it's up to you to keep that change alive by reelecting Chick Heck. And we've come much too far to turn back. So if you would, I hope you will just help win just one more for the Gipper.
Thank you from the bottom of my heart, and God bless you all. something to think about, not only in this election, but in their future years. Now, Mr. President, we have a real Nevada surprise for you. So if you would just walk with me over to uh, where Bertha is standing, we will show you our Nevada surprise. Mr. President, they say there is no sure bet in Nevada, but when you pull this handle, it will be a sure bet for all Nevadans. <laughs> Now, you know a donkey can't do that.